The Royal Horticultural Society have said we are in crisis. The industry is lacking youngsters coming through. This is Eggleston Hall Gardens and over the next 12 months we're going to take you on a journey of what it's like to run a nursery garden. Week 8 and it's very interesting. Thomas has changed his pot in. <laughs> He's got different coloured pots. Taupe. 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 The colour of a anemic dog turd. He's changed his uh, potting, not just to pots, but to Shrubs. Oh, you went for me to answer that. Oh, I was waiting shrubs. for you to bloody answer. You spoiled it there, didn't you? You spoiled, you spoiled that. I'm the, 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 now, not on the segment. <laughs> yeah, we get excited about changing something, especially when it looks different. These are little uh, lovely um, euonymus spindles. They're called spindles because they used to make spindles out of the wood because it's so hard. This is, uh, you can see like the winged stems of. Euonymus elatus. There's some buddlias. Not much to say about them. And these are ribes. Yeah. Yeah, ribes. In England, we have a thing called ribena. It's a black currant juice. Obviously, it's called ribena because there's ribes. Why are you standing there like you've shit and run round it? Waiting for you. Oh, I suppose we'll have to go then. First thing on the morning. I'm trying to culture. Oh, you're still filming. I'm trying to culture for birthday, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because I thought yeah, but I can't do it. Go on then. Go on then. I can't stop filming then. No, you put me on the spot now. <laughs> that has to be a good one. Oh, these little corners are nice. This is uh, one midwinter fire, is it? No. Oh, what is it? Magic flame. Magic flame. It just looks exactly the same as Midwinter Fire. You know, it's think... got a different name. It also has the same magic flame. You don't think somebody's? Uh... No, not in the plant world. Someone's not just going to have a plant that looks exactly the same and give it a different name. That would never that, happen. That would never it? happens. <laughs> no. We have to put up with that all the time, and it's ridiculous. I mean, there's this, Midwinter Fire, Magic Flame, and his Winter Orange. Look, they're exact bloody same. Yeah. It's all a big con. Get you to buy more plants. Say, oh, I've got this one. It's a different name. And it's only, it's hard, there's, no, there's, there's hardly any difference between them, if no. any. Oh, well. The start of a new week. And we carry on where we left off last time. These are uh, the uh, helianthemums that we're uh, cleaning up. There are several hundred of them, so it's quite a long job. Clara is on irises. Irises, yeah. Um, and then I'm basically taking all the dead leaves off and um, like beech seeds, just quickly, and then putting them on the sparrow, wheeling them up to where the other irises are, and then brushing down and all the getting all these dead leaves off the bed, basically. Yeah, 
it's uh, making up some free room on the wall as well because I've got young lavenders that I think I've shown you were in need of potting on and they can come out now and get some air around their gills. Camassias, you'll see these later in the year. They're a lovely blue bulb, um, lovely blue flower, uh, quite large. They come as a bulb and we put about five in a pot and they are the most lovely things. There's the Helianthemums. Thomas, who's working on the shrubs, as a break from perennials, is bringing them up here. Now all the beds in the top half of the nursery, the stock beds, are all cleaned and pressure washed and um, it's just so important and it makes things look neat and tidy and professional. Leaves are a constant problem in this warmer climate because ah, they seem to hang on the trees longer and they, they, they're forever hanging around the nursery. But the one thing Storm Dennis, which we just got out of, has done, it's blown through a lot of the, a lot of the standing stock and got rid of the detritus and stuff. But the wind is still high. We've still got quite a lot of wind. And unfortunately for the rest of the week, we've got a lot of rain here. The country is already flooded. You don't get much prettier than, well, certainly not at this time of the year, than the little iris reticulatas. They're so easy to grow in your garden. You can just pop them in anywhere. A nice little clump. Don't stand them out like soldiers. The crocus, cream beauty. The, the striped blue crocus. They just add so much to the... Well, just to cheer your soul up this time of the year. Cheer your spirit. This is a particular favourite of mine called uh, Fuscatinius, I think. It has a beautiful golden middle to it and these lovely striated petals. Wonderful. Another plant that's as attractive in bud as it can be in flower. And that's the ribes. I know I was a bit disparaging earlier when uh, Thomas was potting some, but actually this is a white form. The flowers are born in sort of like clusters of white, sort of like a cluster of white shells really. The ordinary uh, sanguinium, the genuine flowering current that we all know bright hanging panicles of flower in the spring bright pink there's all sorts of varieties but they are they do add a it's easy to get sniffy about some of this stuff but they do add something and they cheer you up at a time of the year when you're just coming out of winter. But these buds are so beautiful. And there's the, the furry. Here we go again, pubescent stems of Roos typhinia. Let's see if we can uh, have a little close look at this. Pubescent. It has large dissected leaves and they go the most wonderful colour in the autumn. It is, a, it is a lovely thing. Its common name is sumac or stag's horn. There are one or two other things called stag's horn, but there you are. 
That's the trouble with common names. Another plant in a big cluster in the garden this time of the year is this little chap. This is a Valeriana called Valeriana Fu Aurea. And for some weeks now it will it will get bigger and bigger and it'll give you a nice cluster of this bright gold foliage. It comes out before almost everything else as a perennial. It's uh, really attractive. You can't fault the colour, it's, it's a bright gold and it really doesn't go green until, well, in, into June. Very, very attractive thing. Another foliage plant which we've grown recently are these euphorbias. Now, you look at them and you think, what do I do with them? We've had them under cover because I'm, I've been worried about putting them outside, but a friend of mine bought one when they came out a year or two back and there's been no, no problem with it. It keeps it on drier ground, but it's a, it's a Euphorbia amygdaloides, I think. And um, it's, it's a relatively new one called uh, Frosted Flame. And you know, we're in February still, and it's got this lovely colored foliage. These need potting on, they're a bit tatty. They, they were just grown as young plants, but I've got high hopes for these. We grow, pot them into three litre pots and then grow them on through the, through the summer. It'd be interesting to see what they do. What do you think then of the color? look all right the, they're inoffensive yeah which we haven't had in the pest in the past especially with those blue ones no they seem they do blend with the black ones all right don't they they do they do i think they'll be fine yeah. but for recycling purposes we're told that these tote pots are are recyclable whereas the the machines can't pick up the black pots but of course your local council or authority has got to be geared up to recycling pots anyway however we haven't really got a lot of choice we recycle we're trying to use them as many times as possible but even when they're broken then if they can be recycled then that's that's ideal I don't think they're totally inoffensive I would always prefer the black, but you think how are they going to look when they get green algae on? <laughs> I just wonder what sort of effect they'll have, like, when you have bales of silage, you can either wrap them black or you wrap them white. Yeah. People have different preferences for how it makes the silage ferment. Right. It'll be interesting to see whether these, with them being a lighter colour, have more of an effect on the root system. I suppose that the black would absorb heat more, wouldn't it? Yeah. Whereas the white would reflect it. Reflect it more. So yeah. will that help them get a better root system? I don't know. I'll stop them the You're going to find out over the next two or three years. Yeah. I shall. Yeah. Harness. They're meant to. Yeah. Stop the roofs getting to the outside of the pot and coiling, yeah. and then encourage them just to go down and keep away from the head. Yeah. Time will tell. We'll see. Cool. I've spent a lot of my time with a hose pipe in my hand. It's pissing down outside. But underneath that glass and underneath plastic, the plants don't get any water so we have to do it by by hand we tend to keep stuff under here that's probably from warmer
countries where they don't get the rainfall, drier countries. Um, the worst thing for things is a water logging outside. That's what kills them. So we have to uh, just try and keep them a little bit, um, just a little bit protected from that. These are diorama, the angels' fishing rods. All of this stuff has to be processed. By that I mean either raked down and repotted or moved up a size pot. And we're getting through a lot of it now, uh, the outside stuff, so very soon we'll move on to stuff that's been undercover for the, for the winter. The trouble with hose pipes is, and watering like this, is, especially when it's wet outside and it's damp, it makes you, makes you want to go for a wee. I had the indignity yesterday of busting. When I was a kid, I always used to leave it till the last minute. My father used to say to me, have you left that till the last minute, boy? Say, oh, yeah, Dad, I've got to go, I've got to go. And it was terrible yesterday. I was nipped round the back into the woods, busting, absolutely busting. And I'm fishing around for the old man. and uh, I've got my long johns on back to front. So fish around as I might, it's not nothing's going to happen. It ain't going to come out. And then of course I wear braces. Uh, and if you've ever worn braces before, you realise you've got to take your coat off. You've got to take your jumper off. You to get them off, you've got to take your hat and glasses off. Uh, you're dancing around forever. It's an absolute nightmare. I'm stripped down in the woods. I was just thankful that no bugger come around the corner. I never thought I was the right weirdo. The cat mints are doing good. They're doing fine. Look at them boys. Monadas, that's the bergamots. That's a really nice one called uh, Fireball. Really dark red and quite mildew resistant. And everything else, the beds are starting to really fill up. I'm not sure this uh, hedgehog has found his way out of there yet. But we can work around him. He's quite happy to spend the winter there. There's quite a few more of them that are anyway. Here and there around the nursery. Again, it's that a symbiotic relationship like we have with the birds. The old um, hedgehogs eat slugs, they eat snails. And we had a couple last year, I don't know if I've already said this, one had uh, half a nose, one had three legs, and they're, they're quite happy in the gardens, they can, it's safe in here for them, they're not going to get strimmed again, and they help us out, and somewhere I've got a video of um, five little hogs, they had them in the greenhouse. glasshouse. Sometimes people refer to greenhouses and glasshouses. Strictly speaking they are glasshouses. The Victorians called them greenhouses because in the middle of winter there was green stuff in there. Anyway, finished the water in now and I'm waiting for the next 24 hours when we are due to get this month's worth of rain in 24 hours. Can't wait. You know, with the advent of posh cooking, you know where people go into restaurants now and they have these things up on the up on the blackboard or the mirror or whatever they paint it on. This is people have been taking it to do um, painting the menu on mirrors around here. You know, it used to be a blackboard. They even serve you dinner sometimes in some of these posh places on a bloody roofing slate. Well, I, I quite like a pad plate, but anyway, that aside, that's just me being in misery. There, there's a passion for wild garlic, ransoms. Um, it grows in the woodlands and we grow it. Well, we don't grow it, it just grows around here in the, in the nursery. So what we do is just... Uh, dig it up. There's masses of it. And you see these 
lovely little bulbs. We'll put two of the three of them in a pot. And uh, people, they, 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 they go crackers over it. Can't get enough of it. Wild garlic. There's lots of these things now that they have that in the wild that you know you put the world wild in front of it people go they go go bananas it used to be uh if you really wanted to sell a plant it used to be something like uh you could put cottage garden or traditional or nodding in front of the description and go like hell now you just have to put wild food <laughs> Hey, there's nothing wrong with it. We're not fiddling anybody, but you know, we, we, we just digs the bugger out. Look at that there. Look, that there. A couple more of them. Hit the bugger. That's three pounds. Oh. But yeah. Uh, Clara's off sick at the moment. But now we're having to put up with <sighs> snow. It's all you want, isn't it? This is meant to be on for another day. I don't know what it's going to be like tomorrow. But the wall is coming on fine. We free up loads and loads of space doing this. It means I can move stuff out of the glass houses and harden it off. Hardening off means if you've had something under cover, you gradually introduce it to the to the cold. In the old days, we would use a, a cold frame and put young seedlings out there and then close them up at night. But I find oh, with this uh, wall, because it's like a great big storage heater, we can just use this. And we just clean up the stuff and consolidate it up. And now I've got some young lavenders that I want to fill up all the way along here. We keep having to do it in bites, little bite size periods because one minute it's pissing with rain, and the next minute it's snowing, and the next minute it's gale force wind. We're now awaiting Storm Ellen. Wonderful, isn't it? Yeah. wants to go in here. Who's going in there? Tucker, be a good boy. We are again. I think this is Storm Ellen. have a sweep through here occasionally because of the rabbits. Come on, Pat. Oh. I remember making that little seat and putting it there. About 22 years ago it was. I don't think I've seen any buggers sit on it. I'm not surprised it's as dark as hell in it. I would like to cut back one or two of these yew trees. Not right, not right down, but just cut them back. Get some light in this churchyard. It is so dark and dingy at times. However, when the sun comes out, it comes through in little channels, so it can actually look quite oh, effective. Right. Clearing this patch of grasses here, yeah? potting and processing. Most of them just get potted up because they're not that clean on big split, mostly. Um, this rather 
boring looking thing at the moment is Stipper Gigantica. Something out grass, what was it, sorry? Golden Oaks. We'll go inside where we can hear. It's a bit windy again. It forms a great big a great big thing with great big plumes of oak like flowers. You can put it in the middle of a board, it needs a bit of room. You don't want to shove it in a corner because you wouldn't see what it was doing. You wouldn't see the shape, which is half the thing with grasses. So first, as with everything. Actually, not that full at the top. Get all this shoulder off the weeds and the weed seeds. Grasses can be a bit tricky to get in. There's nothing nasty in there. But we'll get as much of it as we can out. And what was probably a liquid amber because they're up there. Then, as best as you can, you want it looking a bit fresher. So a lot of these white bits will just pull out because they're dead. I mean, you could spend days and days getting every white bit out, but... In the garden, they just tend to die back. But when you've got them for pots for sale, you... As Elizabeth says, you just need to jazz them up a bit. We've got a few different grasses. We've got into grasses the last few years because they've we've been asked for them basically. Uh, we get a good range in. There's things like they're not they're not for this time of year. Things like this, which is a what they call elephant grass, miscanthus. Sac Sacra florus. Yeah. yeah. Grow up to three metres. Yeah, it for they, use, yeah they do. Yeah. Use it for biomass. And bedding for animals. Yeah. Other ones, little dwarfy ones, festucas. These will go blue. They're a bit green this time of year. Yeah. Uh, funny little one out here. Sorry. This is it. That dog looks bored. Yeah, bored like pepper. You don't like grasses. <laughs> Yeah, Sometimes plants have really nice names, and this is one of them. This is Carex the Beetles, which has had a haircut. Which has had a haircut, so they don't look like the Beetle. Beetles anymore. Like the Beetles, the, the, the mop head haircuts. Not a beetle. Yeah. And they, they. Older people will oh. realise that without you gesticulating, and. I think it's spelled differently as well. <laughs> <laughs> So they'll flow over the pot. Yeah. We thought these would fly out, but actually they'll be in that pot for the baby next year. Thank you, Elizabeth. How are you doing? Anything interesting? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Some box. box. Oh, dear God. Fascinating things. Box. Smell of box. Is there? Smell of cat weed. There's another thing that smells of cat piss, according to Liz, joining the list of things as irises, fritillaries and ribies that all smell of cat piss. And surprisingly, um, customers off, a customer said to the other day, I love the smell of box. Somebody last year was smelling the, um, or the year before, was smelling the fritillaries. You know those fritillaries? Yeah. Crown Imperials. Uh, Fritill Imperialis, is it? Yeah. Yeah, and they, was, they thought we were smoking cannabis in the garden because they smell like weed. They really do smell like weed. You don't get high on them though. Or mellow. This is a little variegated one, isn't it? Yeah. That makes it random gold. That makes it marginally more interesting. Although you could say it looks sick. Would you say it's sick or interesting? I uh, uh, can't oh, make that's a nice one. And then it goes golden as well. Mm. Although that could just be hungry. We're not selling these, are we? No, just growing these ones on out for a bit. And these are some, uh, oh, we've seen these before, haven't we? Salix Britsensis. Yeah. We could do, we could do an episode on smelly plants in the summer. 
smelly plants. Smelly. And they could go smelly, unbelievably smelly plants, and they could go with your rude garden. All the plants with rude names that you seem to be <laughs> obsessed with. Smelly plants. There's a good list of plants that have not so pleasant odours. Stink. But they don't really smell this time of year. Come on, Pepper, it's, go, it's boring in here. And this bed here is... where we put the grasses. This is uh, a, a wood, a wood luzula, a luzula, a wood sedge. Um, it's a nice little golden one. It's tatty this time of the year. Cortaderia, the pampas grass. Apparently, I suspect most people know this already, but if you're into sort of wife or partner swapping or swinging, they're the things that you stick outside the front of your, uh, your in your front garden. So I'm told. So I'm told. What do you like about that, Pepper? Hey. What's up with it? You're a weirdo. What we're doing now is we're getting some, some of these lavenders sorted out. Yeah, I'm sheltering from the wind primarily, but it's a good time to be doing these. And these are the ones that I've cleaned up and they're going to get repotted. Because it's a dwarf, we're only going to pot up from a one litre to a one and a half. We don't want to go too, too much. They, they don't want very wet, soggy soil. If you look at this, let's find one that's... But what, what I like to do with them is to really clean them out and open up their bottoms. You see this, if you look down in there, because it's been under cover all winter, you can see a lot of detritus and dead leaves and things. And that harbors mildews and funguses and things. So what we're just gonna do is take it out of the pot. You can see all these adventitious roots is just starting into growth. Um, but you don't want it, them going into really deep cold soil so just just a one size up pot if it was a, a taller growing lavender this is Munster it only grows about a foot 30 centimeters so I'm just um, if it was a taller growing one what I would do is put it into a bigger pot but you have to use a bit of common sense there so I'm taking off the shoulder as as normal just twist it off clean it up and then I would use my rake or cultivator and just scrape out the worst of this stuff and then you just need to get your fingers in there and run through and pull out this stuff it really is worthwhile spending a minute doing this they're not all as bad as this one but you just get your fingers in there and let some air around its skirts up its skirts or trouser legs you don't want it all fusty and mouldy up there, around there. There we are, look at that. Now, look. anything dead, just nip off. In the early spring, if you want these to be a little bushier, you could you could nip off these, these lead growths. And um, you don't have to, but you could do just to balance it up and make it a nice rounder plant. And if you look down in there now, it's a lot, a lot cleaner, more open. And you get some air around there so you won't get all this faustiness and uh well that's about it really it's as easy as that and you just put it over there i suppose i could just pop one up not that you haven't seen seen us do this a thousand times a little bit in the bottom When you have young cuttings of lavender, or very small plants, in their initial stages, if you were, we, we tend to put them into a, an alpine compost. They don't need a lot of nutrition. And for the first stage, when they're in, say, a nine centimetre, going from a, a plug or from a cutting up to a nine centimetre little round pot, um, we use an alpine compost that just stops it 
for getting too wet. And we just tamp. And there we are. These are us. We're reusing these pots, and uh, they've been pre-labeled, ready to go. Yeah, it's job done. Easy, isn't it? We can finish filming now. There's no more to say on that. Job. Now this little chap. It's something I never tire of looking at. This is Lucogium vernum. It's just so lovely and delicate. It's the spring snowflake. It's not a snowdrop. And uh, it has these little green, green yellow spots to the edges, of, to the ends of the petals. I think it's such a beautiful and delicate plant. Nice. It's nothing like a bit of hail when you're in a glass house. There's something interesting. For the geeky ones amongst you, if you look up at this glass, do you see how? Everything is running down the middle of the pane. Nothing to the edges. These are Victorian glass houses. And the glass was made to fit these glass houses with a curve inwards. It's slightly concave. So when you put the glass in, there's a slight bend into the middle of the panes. It's very hard to get that glass now. But that's why you know, it always runs down the middle. The Victorians really weren't that daft. You can see, look, you can see there. I find it quite fascinating. The, um, the hail isn't heavy enough at the moment, but you can still get the picture. <sighs> that was a bit boring, wasn't it? That really was a bit nerdy. Well, let's try this again. These old Victorian glass houses were, were wonderful. These are, if we want to open the lower vents, we can just can you see that? Mm -hmm. We just pull this lever back and then close it up. The, uh, the top vents oh. I don't know if you can get up there but they're all opened with You can see as we go, just an opening mechanism. And that's it. I can go really very, very wide open. So we just uh, use them. It's, it's, it's incredible to think they're nearly 200 years old. And we're still working them. They weren't dark. But as I said earlier, the whole point of having this glass slightly bent was that the water went down the middle and there's the wooden spars that hold, that hold the glass, the idea was that it would stop it running down as much next to them. So it prevented the rotting. So all the water ran down the middle. Very ingenious. Yeah.
No, I've done Victoria's bit. What are you at now? Look at Salvia's, aren't Quite it? Salvia's, yeah. Which one? Pink Friesland. I'm still doing these. Same one. Oh, God. Same one. Same actual one. Three hours. Like, you said it would take a long time to get them yeah. fucking leaves out. Oh, well, these ice cream. Yeah. It's, it, I tell you what, it's it's a hard all week to find anything to put, put on. Yeah, it's a little quite interesting. Somebody came in and bought one of these earlier. Not there's anything wrong with buying them, it's just a, this is a Pieris, look at that. Isn't that lovely? I'm not going to look at this too long. It's like a nice acid soil, but they are, it's, most of them are pink, but this is, what's this one called? It's called mixed variety, and it's called that because some bugger lost the label. 